uh, 10 billion states. How are you doing? All right, so today I'm just thinking a little bit. I woke up this morning, all right? First thing I did, I checked my email to see if there was anything to do. And uh, then I went back onto my website and I checked uh, to see if anything happened over night. night. Now, this is pretty typical. Um, but what I got thinking about was, <laughs> I can't really rely on any of this data. Take my uh, YouTube feed, for example. Let's open it up. <sighs> okay, so this is everything I've been listening to lately. Um, now, you won't see this because you haven't watched it 35 times in a row. Nothing ever changes down here. So if I scroll down, I'm getting essentially the same as I saw yesterday in all of these are either videos that I've seen lately or they're rejected videos that I'll never watch. Um, and nothing new ever happens, or very, very rarely. So I'll spend hours and hours on this thing. And yeah, basically, nothing ever really happens uh, unless, unless somebody wants to distract me. And it's pretty much the same with my email and with my phone because my phone messages don't come on time. I get messages and missed calls a day late quite a lot of the time. And yeah, it's pretty clear. It's all kind of there to control me and what I do. So even as I'm doing this, uh, waking up in the morning, checking this out, here's my new videos, here's my old videos, a few more likes, I sit there, I count them up. I've got no analytics on them. I mean, I'm not told, uh, I don't know who's watching, um, there's no comments because apparently you can't comment on my videos. I'm not even sure if you can like my videos because I'm not getting likes. So this is going out there into space. I don't know who's seeing it. Now, I know the shape of my feed. So I'm thinking the most likely thing is that the people who are seeing these videos are people who aren't interested, people who are looking for something else. <laughs> and the only function that I'm actually performing now is I'm annoying people. <laughs> Okay, so this is what can happen when you can shape everybody's individual network and you can shape everyone's individual look at the world. It's not about manipulation so much as limitation and uh, predictability. So if I'm on this track where I see certain things, I know certain things, I follow certain people, and here's another example. I just came up with this, uh, this page uh, for my website. Uh, I thought I'd do a shout out page just so that I'm supporting the people that I'm trying to trying to uh, trying to publicize. I mean, I've got Vernon Cullen up here, Tyrant Finder, Russell Brown, Johnny Bigger, uh, Computing Forever, Joshua Fluke, uh, Bjorn Andres Bull Hansen, the Algorithmic Justice League, uh, Friends of the Original Constitution. Now, these are just people that I've come across, uh, come to trust over a year or two. And I want more people to see, right? But when I look at this list, it's quite diverse and it's also um, quite specific to me. Uh, there's, there's a wild camping guy. There's um, a corporate kind of watchdog guy. There's another guy protesting about COVID. Another guy, uh, you know, these are protest sites, so these are all largely preaching to the perverted and um, and telling me about specific, you know, maybe technical things that not a lot, of, not everybody knows about. Hence, well, you know, the theme we're talking about today. Um, so data censorship isn't so much about <laughs> controlling the knowledge as it is about making sure that the knowledge is disparate and we're all in separate compartments talking to people who we don't need to tell anything to and nobody else you see what i'm saying and then of course we're littered with scare words uh scare concepts things stand out to us that other people miss and vice versa you know i'm probably doing something wildly offensive to 30 percent of the planet without even realizing it all the time um so yeah that's the other aspect of it. So you've got my network, your network, their network, all these other networks and the way they network or interact together. And over all of that, you've got a kind of total power structure and it's the total power structure that's unbreakable. And this, this is the real problem with 
the way data to companies are controlling the flow of data in order that everybody kind of lives in a separate little universe. And that those, those separate universes, when they do manage to combine, they combine in such a way that it's a merry-go-round. And they balance each other out. They cancel each other out. And this is a problem we've got. Now, the only way out of that is to break the monopoly of data and start sharing it the way it's designed to be shared. Now, again, that's a technical solution to a technical problem. And a lot of people aren't going to like it. So where do we go from there? <clears throat> Because just, just that statement alone makes it an end game, and there's so many others. I'm going to pause for a minute, get my thoughts together. Right, so another part of this is that the networks that we're forming and the groups that we're involved in aren't really discrete groups. They don't have a start point and an end point, and everybody in there is a set of that and not a set of anything intersecting. And that's difficult because, you know, you look at something like BLM, um, you may have supported the BLM movement. And then you've got something like Antifa, Antifa, is it? And there's a big overlap with that, but not everybody's one or both. And that's a potential split sometime down the line on something as simple as that. And then you've got the environment. Well, if you're an environmentalist, are you in chaos Re uh, rebellion or are you not? And, you know, where's the intersect on that? And where's the split? Same with anarchism. Are you a spiritualist? Because a lot of anarchists are. Um, but it's almost a completely different thing. And yet you can be talking along the same lines for hours and hours, weeks and weeks. And then the split happens. Um, look at the anti-vax movement. Some of those are anarchists. Some of them are religious. Some of them believe in natural immunity. Some of them are pro-choice. And pro-choice is great. But then you've got the protectionism uh, going on after that, that part of it. Some people are marching because they're trying to protect people. Right alongside anarchists who think that's the worst thing on earth you can be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it worries me that not only are we being put into these groups and we're getting tailor-made data for us, but even if we achieve some kind of network, I'm talking to maybe maybe 30 people now, maybe, maybe 50, I don't know. Um... But if I did maybe get to meet somebody on my shout out list, who knows if we're really going to the same place. And this is why a world where data manages this way, it managed in this way, and it's not as complicated or as sophisticated as it could be yet believe, but it's still enough to stop anything from ever changing. And it's only getting worse. So, okay. Um, I suppose this is another argument for the 10 billion states idea, uh, but it's also a technocracy uh, idea as well, because without the algorithm, without, well, as much knowledge as we can get, but probably not, well, the more the better, obviously. But, you know, people people are worried about the intrusiveness of, of data and privacy, and I don't know what privacy is. I don't know why anyone would want it, but... What could be more private than having all the data in one place that everybody can destroy? <laughs> you know, you can't actually access, but you can ask it questions about statistics and it'll feed it back to you. <laughs> you know, it'll give you the right advice and you can destroy it. Now, I think that's a good shape. But what do you think? Because that opens a whole can of worms. And to me, this is an idea I've been playing around in my head since I was 17. And it's really not that complicated for me anymore. Um, but I'm not explaining it very well. And people have told me about this. The only positive feedback I've had so far is explain your idea. Explain it like we're really stupid. But obviously, I've been working on this for 30 years. Um, yeah, I've got to do a video on this. All right, I'm going to stop there for a while uh, because... I can only record in five minutes sections. <laughs> maybe there's more coming. Maybe I'll leave it there. Right. Yeah, maybe that's enough for today. Um, the argument ain't that hard. Uh, the actual the actual software is hard. There's a bigger question about uh, how we implement this. Um, but of course, there's also a debate about whether we should. I'm not really into the debate about whether we should. I already know. You have the debate about whether we should. Uh, 
the debate about whether we should have it here if you want, no problem. But, you know, I want to be on another team working on actually doing it. That's what I'm interested in. Um, see, to me, when we talk about any individual political political issue, I'm not in that debate anymore. I've already uh, superseded it with the software. I know what I think because I know what I am. And the software knows what I think because I tell it everything. And the software tells me what to do about it because that's its job. Now, once everyone's doing the same, I'll find out who I am in the world, what world I live in, you know? There is no politics anymore. So that's kind of where I am with it at the moment. I just don't want to talk about it. I just want to build the thing. Oh, shit. Where am I going? Yeah. All right. Okay, leave it there for the date. I'll call this one, uh, what should I call this one? Something to do with data. All right, speak to you later. Cheers. Love-ish, you know. Well, yeah, love. Okay, a massive, massive, massive amount of personal power and glory. You know? All right.